I'm David Carson from David Carson Design, and you're watching Be Change. The, the information, um, the solution to any project I've given is always in the materials I've given. It's, it's not outside in a design annual or an awards book or something. It's all, whatever I'm given, somewhere in there is a solution and it's going to send me in some direction. So I'm going to read the brief, I'm going to look at any other materials they've got, uh, analyze maybe who their competition is, who the client is, and it's, it's going to send me in some direction. So there's nothing automatic, there's no formula, there's no grid, there's no prearranged uh, way of approaching. It's like, okay, what have we got here? What, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to communicate? Who's your audience? What's the competition? What are they seeing? And that sends me in some direction. So. That's how you go about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a starting point. The answer is always in the stuff you're given. It's, it's there somewhere. Um, you know, the key is you, it's, it's, there's no magic answer for that. Uh, but the, one of the keys is you have to find something you're passionate about, something that you're excited about. And whatever that is, and follow that. If you're passionate about illustration, if you're passionate about selling shoes, whatever that passion thing, you, 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 you have to follow that. And if you're not passionate about type or design, or find that thing that you are passionate about, because especially in the creative fields, you're competing with a lot of people, and uh, most people, who are very passionate about what they do. They love it, they eat it, sleep it. You know, I, I make my living from my hobby. It doesn't feel like work. You know, I can't walk around without checking out every little thing that's going on. Right. You know, bookstore, record, well, they don't have record stores anymore, but, <laughs> uh, you know, I can't walk by without scanning a magazine stand, just looking at covers. So, find that thing you're passionate about. And I said it in my talk, you know, would you, uh, if, if you were independently wealthy, would you still do that same work? And if you would, you've got a great job. And if, if you wouldn't, then find that thing, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. It's something that you don't watch the clock, you don't wait for the weekend, you're, you know, oh, I have to go to work. It's like, I get to go to work. Yeah. Just uh, find, find that. And that's there's no easy answer for that, but if you're not feeling it, you're probably not in it. So you need to keep, keep look, find that thing. Um, and I, I have to say no, I don't. And, and the reason, uh, no big deal to me, is just because, again, getting back to what I talked about earlier, the solution is always in the thing itself, and everything is a different problem, a different group of stuff, of, of writing, of headlines, of photos, of subject matter, of music. It's, they're all different. And so you take that in, and it sends you in a different direction. So. If I just had a formula or a grid or some format, and just, oh, geez, what I'm going to do on this one, I have this much space, and uh, uh, then maybe there you get, you know, I don't think people, people talk about writer's block. You know, I, I, I never have that creative. I may not, it may take me a while. I may do a, a 50 versions, so I get, you know, like, oh, that's working, okay, that's working, but, but it's fun. I'm enjoying doing that. But in terms of like, oh my God, where do I start? No, I, I can't imagine that. I mean, you give me any brief, it has to send me to a starting point. Oh, that's going to need a formal font. Oh, that's going to be handwritten. Oh, that's going to need photography. Or that. So, yeah, no, don't have creative box. How do you strike a balance between giving the client what they want versus retaining the surfing designer that is David Carson? Well, well I tend to get clients who at least say they want something a little bit different. So I don't have a lot of the battles maybe okay. that a lot of designers or even ad agencies might have. People who find me say at least that they want something a little bit different. And it's a matter of do they really let you do it or not. <laughs> um, but if they don't, if there's a lot of restrictions, which I think I have less than a lot of designers, but 
then it becomes degrees and how can, okay, how can I still do something that I'm happy with as, as a designer, but it works for them. So it's rather than just say, oh, screw that, they didn't give me any freedom, or oh, they won't let me, or it's like, oh, okay, it's just a different challenge. It's, it's you know, I did work for Microsoft that was very, a lot of restrictions. And I could have said, oh, forget that, I, you know, I don't know. I can't, it was like, hmm, that's interesting. How could I work with only one font and all these restrictions and still do something that I'm happy with and yet does what they need it to do? So it just becomes a different challenge rather than say, oh, I don't have any freedom. Oh, the client's too, doesn't let me do what I want. It's like, it's like, hmm, that's interesting. How could I solve that? So I just see it as a different challenge. And, and I would just go back to saying that I, the, the clients who don't like what I do or are afraid of it or are scared to death or hate it, uh, they don't come to me. So, so the ones I hear from already are thinking they want something a little different, a little fresher, a little more unusual. So I, I bypass, I think, some of the arguments that maybe a traditional design firm might, might have. Stop me! I, I don't have one that comes to mind. Uh, I mean, there are some obvious ones like like Apple, just because of the consistency and and the level of the. It's very clean design, but it's very intelligent. Um, and not necessarily something I would do, but I appreciate it. It's done at a really high level and a classy level. Uh, that's tricky. After that, I just assorted stuff I might see on a on a CD cover or something. Um, I think it just it comes, I, I don't purposely try to do it. Um, I just am naturally drawn to checking things out, to watching things, be aware of what's going on, um, pushing myself, trying not to repeat myself. Um, I don't see a big difference in my approach to, to print versus screen. It's the basic ideas and the impact I want to have are very similar. I, just, I might have the advantage of movement and sound to help reinforce something, but um, if you have to force yourself to stay current or relevant or something, then it's probably time to try something else or something, but I'm just naturally drawn to the whole field and what's going on, and I watched a couple lectures today of stuff I wouldn't necessarily normally watch, but it was like, okay, kind of interesting, and um, just stay involved. CD cover. I, I, you know, I, have, I, have, I can't work without music. I have, like many people, probably thousands, thousands, thousands of downloaded CDs and stuff, and I, I cannot work without music. So, any, I'm saying again, I'll probably think of some of that would be a cool one, but uh, any, like I did a bunch of work for Nine Inch Nails, and I wasn't a huge fan of the band. But it was interesting. It was really, you know, I had to listen to a double, I had to, I yeah. had to listen to a double CD before it was released and try to figure out what would that look like. And that to me is fun. That's challenging. So whether it's music I like or hate or love or somewhere in between, it's still a different challenge. It's like I listen to that and I like, wow, what would that look like? How can I represent that visually, that person's music? And so with the Nine Inch Nails, for instance, that was a, one of my best experiences because I was able to take very personal lyrics and personal music and interpret it visually in a way that the guy who, who uh, wrote and performed it basically was happy. So that's like kind of an ultimate compliment in a way. If you can interpret somebody's very personal lyrics and music in a way that they think you nailed it, that's like. Something I haven't done before, uh, something with a lot of freedom. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Those are the two big ones. In surfing, if you if you if you as seen as somebody who just gets in the way, is just <laughs> causing problems, is just can barely stand up, thinks they're great but they're not. 
all those things that you could be considered a kook. So, um, and it's it's worse than being just like a beginner. Like everybody's a beginner at some point, but but if you're you're in the way and but you're buying all the right stuff and but you can barely surf and but you have the stickers on your car and all, then you're kind of a kook. And it's a real negative word in surfing. Like if you really want to. I mean, it's not like swearing at them or something, but if you want to like write somebody out, oh, what a kook. And so, yeah, it's just uh, it's a negative connotation for somebody who thinks they can surf better than they do. Because this is like a poser, in a way. Poser, yeah. A surfing yeah. poser. Yeah, and, not, and, and but sometimes they're not even posing, they just, they're just, they're kook, they can't surf. Uh, I don't think there's a direct relationship between surfing and, and graphic design. Uh, uh, that's a common. That's a question I get asked a lot, and, and uh, you know, I enjoy. Surf Those are probably my two passions in, in life for right now. Are surf and have been for quite a while. Surfing and graphic design, and for a while it was all surfing. Then I went back to graphic, all graphic design, and now it's, they're kind of sp split. Um, but I don't. I don't see a direct correlation. The only thing I can say is that I, uh, you know, grew up in Southern California around surfing culture, and skateboarding culture, and probably California, the West Coast in general, and being around those sports, it's a pretty liberal uh, kind of environment. And so when then when I started doing magazines, which was the Skate Transworld Skateboarding Magazine in California. Being a surf guy, is, I was probably a little freer than I might have been if I had grown up in the Midwest and, and I don't know, farmed or played golf or something, I, I don't know. So the situation, I think, lent itself to when I ended up doing surf, skate, rock and roll magazines, that I was from California and kind of involved in the surf scene, which is casual, liberal overall. And it lent itself to the way I work, which is no no formal training. You know, I never yeah. learned all the things I'm not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have four years of learning everything you're not supposed <laughs> right. to do. Yeah. I just did what made sense to me, and then other people said, "Oh, you can't do that. You can't. Oh, yeah, I broke this rule." Or, no, I just I'm making that made sense to me. But in answer to your question, I don't see it. People have often tried to make a correlation, but I don't see a direct correlation other than it put it put me in a world or an atmosphere of a little more experimentation kind of is okay and you can do things a little different and it's okay whereas different parts of the world or even America you might you would have gotten all this resistance so there's it's it's related but I because I enjoy surfing and in, in a certain way in a certain place and certain surfboards I don't think it affects my graphic design and surfing, I think, has had very little effect on graphic design in general. It gets over. People talk about surf graphics or, or something. And surfing really has had very little effect on the broader field of graphic design. A good job is something you would do. I ended my, my talk with it, but it's, it's something that... A good job feels like a hobby. It's not something that you dread going to work for, that you don't watch the clock. It's anything you would do uh, even if you weren't getting paid for it. You know, I mentioned, I ended my talk, I think, with it. If you were, if money wasn't an issue, would you still be doing that work? That's a great job. So something that uh, you enjoy going to, you don't watch the clock, you're, uh, time flies, you just, that's a good job. And, and and you know, if you don't find that, you should you should be looking <laughs> because you're gonna spend a lot of time working.